Hey everyone, I'm Marina from Pineapple Yarn and I am here to share with you today how I finish off my machine knitted socks. So I knit basically all of my socks on a circular sock machine and the way I finish off the toes is I actually graft them by hand. It's a really easy process but I had some trouble when I first started out and I didn't find a lot of resources that helped me understand how to do this. So I'm gonna bring you in for a close up and share with you how I finish off my socks. So here is a close up of my sock. This is the finished sock. And I did a one by one hand knitted rib on the top just because I really liked how that looked on this particular sock. This colorway was from my 2021 Seabreeze Advent Calendar. So it's just so, so pretty, light and bright. And then I did a short row heel on the machine. And here is what we are here for, this toe. And you probably know if you're watching this that a machine knitted toe is the same as a machine knitted heel. <laughs> it's the exact same process. The only difference is that when you finish the toe, you are going to be grafting these stitches together. So let me show you what this looks like on the other one. So here I have hand knitted the top part of this sock. I just, you can tell I haven't even woven in the ends yet. And we've got the body of the sock. And then here we come down to the toe. And so you can see, doesn't that look like a heel? It's the exact same shape, which is so, it's just so cool how these come together. And all of this yellow is going to come off, as you might imagine. The, this is the waist yarn and it separates one sock or one sock tube from another. So these actually were connected together at one point and in order to separate these two, I just used this waste yarn to separate them. All right, so this is the area that we are going to be concerned with right now. Okay, let's just look real closely at what we have here. We have our heel looking object, which is actually going to be the top of our toe. <laughs> this is going to be the tops of our toes, which is just, it's so cool. And then on the sides, you will see all of these short row stitches. And so how this is going to end up is it's going to look like this. We're having all of our short, short row stitches on the sides here. And then what we're going to do is actually, we're going to tuck all of this waste yarn into our sock and stitch it up. I want to give you a tip that is really helpful. When you are at the end of your sock and you've knit the short row toe, go ahead and leave a good amount of yarn. So right here I have probably two feet of yarn and I use this to stitch up or graft my stitches. All right. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to tuck all of these waste yarn, this waste yarn portion into the sock. So now we can get a better look of what we're stitching, how it's going to look. And since our yarn is on this side, we're gonna flip it around and I am going to be stitching from right to left. Let me grab my needle. I'm gonna be using this needle. Um, it's a little bit bulky for this, uh, for sock yarn, but for some reason I just keep coming back to it, which is really funny. Um, this is an Addy needle. I really like it because it has this bent tip. 
I'm sure you can get thinner needles that look like this, that are this shape, but I just keep using this. So this is what we're going to use today. All right, we're going to start by taking our yarn here and threading our needle. All right. And I'm going to flip this sock uh, inside out real quick so you can see what's going on in the sock. So this might look a little confusing, don't worry, it's, it's going to be okay. <laughs> but we have right here, we have the end of our sock yarn and we have the beginning of our waist yarn. And then we have kind of a loose hole right here because this is where one stitch was made with the sock yarn, the last stitch was made with the sock yarn, and then the beginning stitch was made with the waist yarn. We're gonna go ahead and put our needle through that opening and reach for it on the outside of the sock. So let's get a good look on what we have on the outside of the sock here. As you can see, I pulled my sock yarn through this opening that marks the last of the, the last stitch of my sock yarn and the beginning stitch of my waist yarn. So now I'm going to go ahead and fold this waist yarn back inside. And I want you to pay attention to this part because this tends to be the most complicated part of the whole process. I'm going to fold this and fold it together and the corner of the fold is actually going to be that hole where I brought the sock yarn out of. So this is what we're left with. And now it's time to graft. What we're looking for is we're looking for the points of the stitches to meet. And that will become more apparent as we move down the line. But at this point, it's a little difficult. So I hope that I can give good instruction to this point because uh, this was what really was difficult when I first started doing this. We are in a real close up here. So for the top row, let's go ahead and see what stitches we have available. Now, like I said, uh, knit stitches are in V's. And so we are looking for the point of one V to match the point of the bottom V. So the top stitches are actually going to look like a V, like down, up. And then the bottom row, we're looking for like an A basically, so the point is going to be going up and down. I really hope that makes sense, but I will be as good as I can with the explanations here. <laughs> so as you can see with this row, we have some stitches here that my needle's pointing to right now, but these are actually pointed upward. They're pointed like an A, so we don't want to start with those. We actually want to start with this section. So we're gonna go to the next leg right here and we are going to pick these two up. Now it doesn't look like a V. It's really hard, they're kind of spread apart and that's the tricky part when you first start this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull those. Let's move to the bottom row and see what our selection is with our first stitches. Okay, so the bottom here on our, uh, on the other side of the hole that we came out of, we have this right here, but do you see how this is making a V? We don't wanna put our needle in there. Instead, what we're going to do is we're gonna move to the next leg over. And do you see how this is forming an A? The point is pointing up to the top row instead of making a V. So if you remember that the points 
of each stitch are going to be pointed towards one another, I find that's the easiest way for me to understand what's going on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tuck my waist yarn back under here. I'm gonna tuck this little piece down in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and look and see Let's see where I came from. So this was my first stitch right here. And if you're not sure where your stitch was, you can go ahead and give your thread a tug and it kind of closes up some of those stitches. It's a little bit easier to tell. So now I know that this was my first stitch. So now I'm just, all I'm going to do is just go to the next V. Can you see where to go? It would be right here. So we're just going to put our needle underneath both legs of that stitch and pull it through. Now let's go ahead and look down on our bottom row. So we are going to be alternating between top row, bottom row. And I can see this yarn right here. That's the yarn that we traveled to the bottom row to begin with. I'm just going to snug it up. Again, I can always just pull my yarn. I can tell where I was. And so here I see some V's, but we don't want V's. <laughs> We already got this leg. We're gonna want our A's. We want it to be pointing up from where we came from. So we're gonna go ahead and pick up those two legs of the stitches. Gonna go ahead and pull those stitches through. And there we've completed another set of stitches. This is getting a little easier as you get past this corner. At least I find it a little easier. <laughs> so let's go ahead and we're gonna go back up to our top row. Let's see what stitches we need to choose from. So we're going to be choosing from V's because because V's point toward the middle. We're going to pick up the two legs of the next stitches, pull it through. We're going to go ahead and look at our next option. Now this is, you can see here's our yarn. And so we've already done these stitches here. We're just going to go to our next A. We wanna look for an A shape instead of a V shape. And it is going to be pointing towards the middle. And that's how you can tell. So those arrows, you can think of the stitches as arrows that are pointing towards each other. And you are going to continue this all the way across. So here is our V shaped stitch. And then we will go to our A shaped stitch. And you might wonder how tightly I'm pulling. I am pulling snug, but not tightly. I tend to pull maybe a little more tightly than necessary, only because it is the top of the toe and it will be under stress. Uh, so I'm okay with it showing a seam. Because when you are grafting stitches, it's nice to make them the same tension as the stitches that you've knit the body of the sock with, but uh, since this is closing up a seam on a high traffic area, I'm kind of okay with, you know, if it's a little 
more tight rather than loose. <laughs> if that makes sense. So let me go ahead and stitch this bottom, these bottom stitches together, and I am going to show you what we've got so far. So I think that that looks like a good tension. I don't think it looks too tight, and I think it looks, uh, it, de it definitely isn't too loose. I think that looks good so far. So I'm going to zoom you out a little bit and then I'm going to continue with the rest of this toe. Now, you might also wonder if you could do this purely on, on a pure, purely hand-knit sock, and I don't see why you couldn't. The, way, the reason this is easy is because it has the waste yarn on top, but I don't see if, you know, say you didn't like Kitchener Stitch, or you just wanted to try this out on a pair of hand-knit socks, I do not see why you couldn't add some waste yarn as you knit the toe of your sock. If you did a short row toe, or even if you did just a regular, you know, you don't have to do a, um, a toe this shape. You could actually do a cuff down sock and be, get ready to Kitchener and just add some waste yarn to the top and then just do this same process, it would be, it really would be just fine. You could definitely graft the toes on your hand knit socks. This is just a little bit different process because on the circular sock machine, it doesn't really, at least as far as I understand, I don't really know a way to do decreases in the traditional sock knitting fashion. but I am sure there are many other prolific knitters than me. <laughs> and I'm just sharing what I know. I'm sure there are people out there who have experimented with that. So if you have tried it out yourself or if you know of any channels or blogs that have experimented with grafting toes or finishing up socks from a circular sock machine, I'd love if you link it below because I would love to see it, but then also just to educate any viewers of this video who might also want to educate themselves. Try out some new techniques. Okay, so here we are. You can see this tiny yellow dot. We are almost at the end. And here's where it again gets a little tricky. So I'm gonna bring you in for a close up. And you know what, I'll just take my needle out. So you can see all these stitches are starting to get really stretched on this side. And they're starting to get really stretched on the bottom. And so it's going to be hard to keep track of the V's and the A's. <laughs> But if we tuck that in, we can just see. It also helps when you have variegated yarn because you can kind of track the color. So see, I had actually grabbed for this pink, but I almost led you astray. The yarn or the stitches right now that I am stitching are this really pretty kind of aqua blue. So most likely I am looking for that same aqua blue and I totally am. I almost grabbed the pink, that would have been a mistake. So I'm gonna grab those, do those stitches. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and look down here. And this is, it, it does just get really confusing and it's hard, but this is the last pair of stitches that we picked up. I have my needle sticking underneath them right now. And so the next pair of legs here of these stitches are actually these two right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick those up. And basically, oops, I'm going to tuck that. tuck that back in. Okay, now I can just look at the side here and I am looking for any other of these top stitches or any of other of these bottom stitches that I have not picked up. Now when you are picking up these two legs, I just want you to think about you're picking up two stitches here. This isn't one stitch, this is actually two stitches. If you think about knit stitches as loops, you're actually going through two loops. So if you go to this next side right here, we see another blue stitch. This is actually just the counterpart to this one that we've already picked up. So we are good with the top there and then also the bottom This is the last pair of stitches that we picked up. And just the same as the top, these are actually two stitches. And so if I find, which I don't see on this side, I don't see any other stitches on this side. So I am all set, I'm done. And I am going to just reach in and grab my needle. So I kind of put my finger there so I can see what's going on. I'm not going to go back through the stitch. I'm actually just going to go to the side of where I went in. So I went in here and I'm just gonna go over one leg. I hope that's clear. I'm not gonna, I just don't wanna go back in and take out the stitches and, I, and pull it through. Here's my inside out sock and I am just pulling it out just like that. And so now what I do is to finish this off, I do not sew in my ends quite yet just because if I have a mistake, I have this already to go and I can fix it if I need to. I can grab a loop, a stitch if it has, uh, it has come off <laughs> and I've missed it or something. So now is kind of a fun part. I just go ahead and unravel the waist yarn. Um, I try to reuse my waist yarn on my circular sock machine projects. I usually do about anywhere from like 12 to 15 rounds of waist yarn and the reason is, is because a lot of times you get a snag, like right now I just got a snag, um, and sometimes you need to clip off an end or something. And so um, I like to give it a little extra. And then two, they fray, the strands fray sometimes. So here we are, the last portion of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put my hand into the sock one more time to double check my stitching and make sure I caught everything. So you can see where I just took all these out. You can see that they're standing up a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give some pressure. Here's where we first started. Looks good. I'm just looking to see, did we catch everything on this side? It looks like we did. It looks good. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and sew in my ends real quick sure if you're interested in how I stitch in my ends but I'll help anyway <laughs> I'll show you anyway here's where my thread came through so obviously I'm not going to grab this loop because that would be putting my stitches back through the same opening but I'm going to start with this pink stitch right here 
and I'm just going to go one and then I'm going to go diagonally that way. So one, two, three, four, five. This is the way I have always sewn in my ends and it seems to work and you can't see it on the outside so I just keep doing it. <laughs> And then I'm just going to go to the next diagonal. Here's a blue, see this blue stitch right here? I'm just going to go back up. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to go five there, pull that one through. I'm going to do one more because this is the toe and I want to make sure it's real secure. So one more time. And it doesn't need to be the diagonal right next door. You know, you can skip over, it's okay. One, two, three, four, five. You may want to um, put this uh, stitch in your ends at the top of your toe rather than the bottom. So you're not stepping on them, but I don't really, I don't really get fussy about that to be honest because it's never bothered me. So there you go. There it is, all stitched in. Let me grab some scissors. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this. By the way, these are, in case you wonder, these are Singer scissors. Oh my goodness, they are so sharp. So I still have my ends in, my ends to tuck in for my cuff, but I'll do that later. We are only concerned with our toe right now. There's our heel, and here is our beautiful toe. Oh, looks so good. I think it came out so, so well. You can definitely see a little crease there, and that's where we stitched. Here's a close up. Oh my goodness. It looks so great. I really like it. And so one reason that there might be a little bit of a difference when you graph these together is because this has a different tension than the toe. So you have your heel spring on, which makes your stitches tighter in the toe and the heel. And so right here, your stitches are looser. And so when you graph those together, you're, you're going to have a line, even if you uh, do really well tensioning your stitches. So don't worry about that. It's, it's going to happen because there is, that is the line between your looser stitches and your tighter stitches. But I think that looks really good. And it's really, it really is fast once you get started and get used to it. Well, that is how I finish up my socks. And I hope that you really enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If it was, I'd love if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment in the comment box below and I'll try to get back with you. Um, also, if you have any good resources, that maybe are different than what I talked about today. That would be so cool if you could leave those below because I love to watch them <laughs> and it might help other viewers of this channel as well. But I hope it was helpful and I will see you next time. Bye.